in the last class we saw how the rotating magnetic field is created in a certain stator configuration in today's class we'll start our lecture by visualizing the vectors those were shown in the previous lecture using simple programming language in order to do that you may use any compatible platform for example matlab gnu octave etc here i am going to use gnu octave which is compatible with matlab programming moreover it is a free software under the terms of gnu general public license let us start well this is the case for omega t equal to 0 degree this is the direction of b a a prime this is the direction of b b b prime this is the direction of b c c prime from the previous calculation we know that for omega t equal to 0 degree b a a prime will be 0 that's why there is no value b b b prime was having negative value and it was root 3 over 2 b m so this is the value for root 3 over 2 and this is bcc prime root 3 over 2 the resultant magnetic field is drawn here and this circle shows the value for 1.5 bm that means 1.5 amplitude if we consider bm having value equal to 1 now if we skip some points and take omega t equal to 30 degree then the figure will look like this from this figure we can see initially the resultant magnetic field was here then it rotates in the anti-clockwise direction and comes here this is the magnitude of ba prime the, the bb prime is under the resultant magnetic field that's why it's not visible and this is the bcc prime let us see another case for omega t equal to 60 degree this is the case for omega t equal to 60 degree we can see resultant magnetic field is still having 1.5 magnitude that is 1.5 times of bm rotating in the anti-clockwise direction let's check another case that is for omega t equal to 90 degree now this is the case for omega t equal to 90 degree we can see the resultant magnetic field comes here with same magnitude and it's rotating in the anti-clockwise direction Things will be more clear if we show you the figures one after another for a small value of omega t and that will look like an animation let's run the animation using this programming language to have better view we'll take three complete cycle we'll see what happens We can see from here that for every instant it's adding three vectors BAA prime, BB prime and BCC prime and we are getting a resultant magnetic field. It's rotating in the anti-clockwise direction I want all of you to write simple codes in order to visualize this phenomenon we have seen that whenever a three-phase supply is provided in a stator with this mechanical configuration a resultant magnetic field will be produced that is virtual we can say this is the resultant magnetic field and this magnetic field will be rotating if we have the resultant magnetic field direction in this direction what does that mean this side is the north side this side is the south side and field is moving from north to south and for our configuration it was rotating in the anti-clockwise direction so whenever we'll give a three-phase supply in this mechanical configuration there will be creation of non-alternating rotating magnetic field and the magnitude 
of that magnetic field will be 1.5 bm 1.5 b small m what is bm bm is the peak magnetic field of the alternating magnetic field produced by each phase current as this magnetic field is rotating so we need to figure out what is the rotational speed of this rotating magnetic field as well as how can we change the direction of rotation of this rotating magnetic field now if we consider the supply frequency of the supply current is fe remember this is considered as electrical frequency and the rotational speed is considered as omega m and this is the mechanical speed of this rotating magnetic field this is electrical frequency and this is the mechanical speed of the rotating magnetic field so we can consider fm as mechanical speed in revolutions per second now from our simulation we saw that when electrical frequency moves from 0 degree to 180 degree this rotation also moves from 0 degree to 180 degree so whenever it moves from 180 degree to 360 degree then it also moves from 180 degree to 360 degree if you recall the previous simulation you'll see that whenever electrical cycle completes 360 degree then mechanical rotation also completes 360 degree now this rotational speed of this rotating magnetic field depends on the number of poles used for per phase case in this configuration we are using two poles per phase for example for phase a we have one pole here another pole here so two pole per phase for phase b we have one pole here and another pole is here two pole for phase b and two pole for phase c so that's why this configuration is named as two pole per phase sometimes it is expressed as one pole pair per phase both are same thing for two pole per phase case we have found our fe and fm that means whenever electrical supply passes 180 degree then this rotating magnetic field also rotates 180 degree so we can say for two pole per phase case fe equal to fm that means electrical frequency equal to mechanical frequency hence we can write omega e that is electrical speed radian per second equal to omega m which is the mechanical speed in radians per second mechanical speed means speed of this rotating magnetic field this is for two pole per phase we'll see what happens if we have higher number of poles per phase later on but for this configuration we can understand that whenever we have two pole per phase then the speed of the rotating magnetic field will have the exactly same speed of the supply frequency now if you want to increase the speed of this rotating magnetic field what you need to do you need to increase the frequency of this supply current generally we, we cannot change this because this is provided by our electrical suppliers so frequency of this supply remains constant so speed of this rotating magnetic field remains constant for a particular mechanical stator configuration now let us see stator configurations for four pole per phase case suppose this is the stator frame here we'll configure the four pole per phase stator configuration previously we were having two pole per phase and the pole angle difference was 180 degree as we have two pole so 360 over 2 will give us the angle difference mechanical angle difference between the poles in each phase now for phase a instead of having 
two poles per phase if we consider four poles per phase then the mechanical angle difference between the poles will be 90 degree as 360 degree divided by 4 is equal to 90 so let us draw the first pole here let us position it first now let us draw the first pole for phase a so if we start from here this is the first pole for phase A and the second pole for phase A will be 90 degree apart for four pole per phase case. So that should be positioned here. And the third pole for phase A should be positioned here. And the fourth pole for phase A should be positioned here. So these four poles are for phase A. Now remember we have to make the windings in such a way whenever we'll have north pole here then at that moment south pole should be here. North pole here, south pole should be here. So if we have the winding like this we can take the connections from here. If whenever we'll have current going to this direction so this will be the direction and this where must be brought here in this way they should be connected this will be the current direction and here this will be the current direction uh, instead of taking the connection from downward we take the connection from here and they should be connected in this fashion and the other side must be connected with neutral this will be the current direction for phase A now let us position the phase B poles phase B is 120 degree mechanically apart from phase A as we know from the previous case so the first pole will be located here we can place it here and as they are having four pole per phase so the second pole of phase B will be located 90 degree apart from this line so it can be placed here we can draw a 90 degree line from here so this is the second pole for phase B and here this will be the position for the third pole for phase B and finally this is the position for foot pole for phase B. Phase B is connected from here. So if we start from here like this format then it will move here. this is the neutral point again if we want to draw the poles for phase c that must be placed 240 degree mechanically apart from the first phase case so that will start from here and the second pole will be 90 degree apart from here if we plot a 90 degree line So the second pole must be placed here and the third pole must be placed here and the fourth pole for phase C must be placed here. Now phase C connection will start from here. This is C that will start from here. 
in this way the second one will be this in this way and go to this one and finally after having winding this one then this point will be the neutral connection so this is the stator configuration for four pole per phase case now that will also produce a rotating magnetic field when the magnetic field moves from north to south for each phase for this case it's moving 90 degree mechanical angle but whenever the field moves from north to south electrically it goes from this point to this point that means it moves 180 degree though there is a 90 degree movement in mechanical angle but electrically it will move from north to south that means one peak to another peak that is 180 electrical degree so for this case whenever rotating magnetic field moves 90 degree electrical angle moves 180 degree we can say theta e that is the electrical angle equal to twice of theta m that is the mechanical angle of the rotating magnetic field for the four pole case so we can say f e equal to twice of f m and also we can say if we multiply twice pi in both sides we can say omega equal to twice omega m this is the case for four pole four poles per phase let us remove this figure from these two relationships if we want to write the generalized relationship for p number of poles suppose a stator is having p number of poles per phase then theta e that means electrical angle can be written as p by 2 theta m hence we can write fe electrical frequency can be written as p by 2 of this frequency of the rotation of rotating magnetic field remember this rotation is a mechanical rotation and omega e can be written as p by 2 omega m so this is the angular speed of rotating magnetic field remember generally the rotation of the rotating magnetic field or the rotation of any motor is represented by rpm r p m rotation per minute so if we consider the rpm of r m f rotating magnetic field is n s that is also called synchronous speed which will be defined later so if we consider rotation per minute of rmf is uh, defined by ns then we can say fm equal to ns over 60 why did we divide ns by 60 because ns is represented in terms of minutes so in order to convert it to second we have to divide it by 60 so we can write fe equal to p by 2 ns over 60 so we can say ns that means the speed of rotating magnetic field equal to 120 f over p this is the speed of rotating magnetic field in rpm so this speed the speed of the rotating magnetic field totally depends on the supply frequency here we should write fe uh, supply frequency and the number of poles per phase once a stator is constructed the number of pole per phase is fixed and this fe is our supply frequency we cannot change it in general 
we generally do not change it so the speed of the rotating magnetic field remains constant for a particular motor so that's all for today in the next class we'll see how can we reverse the direction of rotating magnetic field thank you